What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another One Piece Burning Blood character guide video. My name is Sivakoji, or Sivakiji, and welcome to the Zone Gaming Go. You can find the Zone Gaming Go by looking it up on this YouTube. Zone Gaming Go, Sivakiji, Ren Rohawk, or you type in Sivakiji or Rohawk. So, this is going to be a pretty quick guide because I am really confused about this character in terms of, like, um, just literally like one combo string that I'm just confused about. Uh, but I'll probably ask uh, someone later. So, if a Doflamingo player will please put something in a description, not a description, but in the uh, comment section about how to exactly do this combo that I'll demonstrate in the end, um, please do that for the people who are watching. Um, they will much appreciate it. And basically, it's kind of one of the only combo strings that I can think of he can do by himself. Uh, besides, that's actually big damage. So, first off, let me explain Doflamingo. Doflamingo is. One of the main characters in this game. I say that because this game is literally probably based around his arc. Um, he is a tricky based character. He is pretty agile. He's tall. So let's compare him to Buggy here about this about the about the tallness. He pretty much is a tall character. Now not like Whitebeard tall. Let me bring in Whitebeard here. Yeah, he's a little bit he's a little bit not at Whitebeard. Whitebeard actually extends a little bit when he actually sits up, so you're gonna be seeing a little bit of a height difference when that actually happens. But right now, um in terms of like jumping over him, certain characters can jump over him, some characters don't. I mean like giant characters, new in hell. But you gotta think about that height difference well, because height in this game matters so much, and he's a pretty tall dude. Okay, so zoning character, three thousand points, tricky. Um he is has hockey and Del Fruit. Um Conqueror's hockey is a big game plan for Dr. Mingo. Uh Conqueror's hockey allows him like a lot of his combos together, a lot of his basic strings together. Without Conqueror's Hockey, this character really can't do much. Without Delfru, this character can't do much. Um, basically, his character relies, in my opinion, off range combat and kind of getting your opponent to, in a way, mess up. Um, he has a lot of uh, counteracting tools, like the, uh, not the overheat, but the marionette, as well as his special movement, able to get out of those chicken two situations. Some characters struggle in terms of getting hit by walls. Um, Dothamingo does have a fast acting special, which is the marionette, which can possibly get him out of those wall combos that people will put him into. Um, in terms of like uh, zoning, he has a couple of tools to zone, and we'll get to that in a second. Um, but in my opinion of the character is that he's, pure, he's, a, he's people say he's purely a zoning. I don't think he's purely a zoning character. He can fight up close. I just feel like in terms of fighting up close, he's very limited compared to what he can do from a distance. Okay, let's, let's talk about these A combos here. So basically, it's going to be five hits ending in overheat. And we're going to explain the A combos for a second, or the A hits. So how Dothamingo actually works out is that he's pretty fast. Well, pretty okay. He has a wide range. Look at how he moves. So how Dothamingo is actually moving, his character model is changing. So this character on the standby, while they're running, creates a huge hitbox or hurt box. Like, this, his hands, all that stuff, all that is just come, is becoming a new hurt box. So, the character's model is bigger when he's actually moving around. So, that's something that we all figure out at the moment here. Let's get it wiped because I really hate when it happens. Go out of here. Okay. So, um, let's go with his A combos now. So, as you can see, when he actually does his A button, we'll go all the way through. He stops moving on the third and the fourth hit. I think it's third. No, fourth and fifth hit, I mean. Yeah, well, no, no. Wait, one, two, three. Okay, yeah. He technically stops moving on the fourth and fifth hit. Uh, third hit kind of moves him a little bit forward, but the fourth and fifth hit is when he actually stops moving. And that's something you got to remember when you're playing as the character. Remember that this character stops moving, and remember what to not do. Now, the character's first and second strike is one swing to the right and one swing to the left. This is also something to note as well, because these are wide arcing swings. This means that if the character is trying to sidestep in the right side direction, they will get hit by the swipe. Try to get hit by the left side direction, they will hit by the second swipe. So that's something to look forward to when you're actually playing against character now remember at all that stuff matters when you're dodging uh back stepping front stepping whatever side stepping jumping all that stuff matters and because he's also a pretty decently sized character the swipe actually goes further up in air which means it can actually work technically as an anti-air if the person is actually in air and big enough to actually get hit now on the third hit it's a little bit lower it's kind of like a low hit because for the third hit he doesn't really do much of an arc it's kind of a swipe like a little swipe there so if the character is actually like up in the air, he will possibly miss the character, but he is very low, which means sidestepping probably will be caught by this move. Now on the fourth hit here, um, where we're gonna see the uh, the basic um, like like the I say the car, I call it the cartwheel. Now we see the cartwheel. That move is also kind of a low. It's not gonna anti that much. And we're going to the fifth hit, which is where basically nothing else can happen. And this is the knock you away thing. And after that is the overheat. So nothing can be interrupted after that hit as most enders can. So um, to talk a little bit about what he could do during these aces. Um, he can do his normal guard break in any of them. The thing about the normal guard break is a knocking away. It will not do any sort of chain whatsoever. It won't link. 
Um, I believe it won't link unless you actually cause a uh, Kagurasaki spike and you get the link on that. So that's something you can actually fix that link. Now, after the third and the fourth hit is when you can use overheat. Now, after the third hit, or A3, are you going to call it, um, is he can use the overheat interrupted, but it won't be a combo, which means in order to actually interrupt it, you will have to use Conqueror's Hockey to actually get the character back. And you can continue a little combo there, you know, do something else, whatever. Let's, let's, let's try this again. One, two, three. Step forward. Ooh, my bad. I did not do it quick enough. But um, that's the combo I was talking about, by the way, guys, or one of the combos to actually, like, you step forward with Doflamingo and then do overheat. That's something I... It's like I'm off and on with that combo. I'm not going to keep demonstrating it because I'm going to keep failing and messing it up and stuff or, like, getting it right. I don't know. Um, so if someone can go into the description and... Not description. The, <laughs> the comment section and kind of explain how that combo actually works, I would appreciate that. Such a death for me. That would be awesome. So he cannot do Marionette after the third hit, which sucks. I lied. Oh, why did I even say that? Oh, it's right here. I wrote it down. <laughs> My bad. So yeah, you can't do marionette after. I just why I didn't feel like running down. And it is an actual combo, which is something also you gotta mention. One, two, three. So that's good. Okay, we'll scrap marionette in a second. So the fourth hit is where everything is glorified. After the fourth hit, that's what you can use to overheat basically, and it's an actual combo. And you can also use marionette, and just like the after A3, it is still a combo. So that's also good. That is pretty much that's it. That is it. Okay, you're thinking about maybe I can use a range attack? No, that's not how it works. Range attack you can do in a combo or stuff like that, but you have to enact the Conqueror's Hockey in order to actually mess with it. Now, I believe certain characters, like if I do one, two, let me just do it like regularly. Let me let me try. It. Is it him? I think it's I think it's Kuma. Let me. I remember. I don't know if it was Kuma or Fuji that can do this. Okay, I think it's Kuma. I think it's Kuma. Try one more time. Okay, you know, maybe it, maybe it needs to be a bigger character, and I can probably get him then. Okay, so, um, next up, <laughs> that's it. I mean, I'm laughing over here at the A buttons. It wasn't really all that much. It's just I had to talk a little bit about what he can do with his A's so you can actually anti-air when people are jumping over you. Because that's a lot of things. That's a lot. Of, that's going to happen a lot when playing off of me. You're going to jump over a lot, or attempted jump over for a knock-up hit. And because he's so tall, people are going to try to go for the side hits very easily. And when you're actually swinging and when you're moving your model constantly over and over again, it's not going to be that hard. Okay, so moving on to his guard break. So his guard break here regularly is a knockdown guard break. Uh, this guard break puts you inside of a little stun here. Now you're probably wondering what can I do afterwards? See how we... I need to mention as well that that fourth hit will miss air. If you're a potent person in the air, you will miss when that fourth hit. As demonstrated when I already did this. See, it looks like one, two, three, four. It missed completely. Okay, so um, this can be done to knock your phone on the ground, set up for any type of your character. Um, basically set up for Doflamingo stuff if he wants to use Overheat, or perhaps wants to use... I don't think he can use Marionette after this. I think Marionette's a double stun. I guess he can. Okay, so you can use Marionette after that. That's cool. And that can set up for a, uh, a combo for him, or like an Overheat or something like that. So, uh, moving on here. Let me, let me see that first. Let me see that first. Let me do that. Okay, we can. Okay, so um, moving on to his in, <clears throat> sorry, to his uh, in combo guard break, which will be a further uh, reaching threat move. This move is actually pretty long range, so we can just do this. Yeah. Okay. So you can knock the opponent away, set up for something else, get some room away, uh, let your uh, ability gauge go up, stuff like that. Very situational, to my opinion. Okay, moving on to his heavy guard break. Heavy guard break is one of the few heavy guard breaks that is pretty much godlike. I think it's the um. I think it's the only heavy guard break with infinite range. Besides duel, of course. I want to say yeah. So when he does this heavy guard break, uh, after about a second, threat will come down, knock you hit, and uh, put you in that state. Now, what's really cool about this is that you can actually do this, and then conquers, and then actually go overheat if the person is actually at a certain like you know distance away from you, and that's big damage too. That's like heavy heavy guard break damage. Remember is unlogiable, unblockable, all that stuff. And it's delayed too, so you can still kind of do stuff. So if your opponent does actually end up dodging it, you're pretty much forcing your opponent to actually move the entire time you actually are using the heavy guard break because you're, you're giving them that ultimatum. Like, hey, you want to stay still or you want to move a little bit? Or, hey, you want to use your range moves? Oh, that's fine. Use your range moves. I'll do this. You do where I want. And you can kind of see the thread hit the above the opponent as well. It does good damage too. It's a very strong guard break despite, uh, or st strong heavy guard break despite being a transport character. And doesn't do that much damage but you got to understand the fundamental value of the move itself. 
Okay, so moving on to his other moves here, we're gonna go to his running attack. So his running attack here is a far-reaching, like it's really fast, fast swipe that puts the person inside his tiger type state. And of course, after doing this, you can combo your opponent, doing anything you want to them, switching out, whatever, all that kind of jazz are like, uh, you know, just laughing at their face. Now, uh, when you go to his range attack, as we're going to talk about now, is one of my favorites, actually. It's one of my legit favorite all up range attacks in this game, uh, simply because of what it looks like. He looks so cool in doing it. It's where he does two swipes, so one, two, and then he ends with like doing like a barrage right here. So, cool thing about this is that this move can actually be combo pretty well with his attacks, so you just want to like, you know, give your opponent an opportunity um, to, uh, you know, guess a mix up or something. So you can go one, two. Ooh, my bad. One, two. Nagasaki. Ooh, I always do that. Oh my goodness. What's wrong with me? It's always hard for me. There we go. I did it wrong, but um, usually it's not supposed to end like that. So one, two. Uh, uh, I'm not doing it. Oh, I see. I see. I see. I see. I see what I'm doing. I see what I'm doing. I keep moving backward. Let me go from the back. Let me do the back. This helps me. Okay. Yeah, that helps me a lot. But uh, generally, you can do it from the front if you get the timing down. But if you do it from the back, that's also easier too. Speaking of back, let's do this. Let's do one, two, three, four. Uh-huh. Now two, three. Okay, that's cool. Now let's do this, let's do this. One, two, three, Cockroach Hockey. One, two, three. Okay, you know, I thought I was gonna do something awesome, but I didn't do anything awesome. Okay, now next. We're going to talk about his jump attack. So, jump attack is pretty cool. I love his jump attack and jump unique. Okay. Oh, ooh. Oh, I'm, I'm, I missed a step. Okay, we already showed you his range attack here. Talked about this, how his range attack needs to be Conqueror's Hockey Dash to connect properly. And it can be done after any of his uh, A1s except A5, of course. Okay, back to his jumping attack. So, his jumping attack, uh, they look exactly the same, but they actually do different things. So, his, his jump attack here is a swipe that's a flinch. And of course, afterwards, you can combo. It's actually the, the fastest one of the two. And his jump unique is a slower, but keeps Doflamingo in the air when he does it. And this move is a knockaway. Okay? They look exactly the same, but they basically play a little bit differently. And another cool thing about it is that, okay, let me switch him out. Let me bring in Doflamingo. The unique one will actually um, come in with Doflamingo. Like, he won't go any further. While the attack one will actually put him in that rushing state. Okay. Works very well for a mix up as well as kind of trick your opponent. Your opponent thinks you're gonna come in with the eight with with the uh, jump attack, you come with the jump unique instead. Okay, moving on to his unique button. This is where everything's gets kind of wiki for the characters, you know? Okay, his first unique button here is Black Knight. When he does Black Knight, the character imbues um, a hockey on his leg and does a kick. The kick is kind of like a heavy stagger. I don't want to say flinch, but it's like a heavy, weird stagger or like a light stagger. So when done from a distance, he'll put the clone in front of your opponent, but he'll put it just enough that the move will actually connect, okay? Um, if you if done behind like in front of the opponent, he'll actually put the clone behind him. Now the thing about the uh, Black Knight here is that the move itself can be uh, sidestepped or backstepped or front stepped or moved into, and the character will go away. Now after you do the Black Knight, you do have a little bit of time to just do something else, so you can kind of like mix with your opponent like, hey, just do it, you know, and get hit in the back, you know, it's okay. Okay, so if you press the down unique button, you'll do a different variation, which actually backs uh, Dothmingo up, and another clone will pop up and swipe the opponent. Now, this clone right here um, is like purely in front of uh, Dothmingo, and if done in the person's face, the clone itself will steal. It's kind of like a, a back step, a helpful back step, but a pretty far reaching back step, actually. It cannot be comboed anything, but you can kind of like, you know, spam the Black Knight, Black Knight, Black Knight, Black Knight. Yeah, you can just keep going and have fun with it and everything. Um, the first Black Knight, like I said, has imbued hockey, while the second Black Knight does not have imbued hockey, but works as a really good anti-air. It also works as a very good combo ender from what a player, Daddy Dofi, used the character as, so it works pretty wonders on that as well. Okay, so moving on to his specials, and this is where things get a little bit different for the character. So, Overheat is a far-reaching, can-be-hockey-imbued range attack. It's the only range attack that can be hockey-imbued that doesn't already have hockey. Now, the Overheat isn't that strong as a, as, a, as a move, but when done in a combo, it actually is very powerful, uh, marking as one of the brilliant uh, KOs in this game. Actually, let me do a back hit. Come on, I'm just going to do a back hit on you. 
One, two, three. Lockers hockey. Cool. Okay. Nice damage, though. So, um, other than that here, Overheat, that's really what it is. It is just a very good combo ender, combo extender for Adolf Domingo. I actually explained in the video, you can look that up in my um, tactical analysis value video where I explain Overheat, so check that out, and he'll go into more detail about the move itself. So, Everwhite Flap Thread is especially unique. Now, this move itself is a very good for incoming, so if a person actually is about to come in with a new character, or you want to catch a side swap, or catch a switch, uh, Everwhite is a very good move for that, because your opponent, I mean, hopefully they... Like in this situation right here, this is pretty hard to deal with. Honestly, it doesn't do that much damage, but it is a unity chain, which marks as his first unity chain we actually want to talk about. Okay, so um, everyone, I think Dolphamingo only has two unity chains, if I'm not mistaken. Does he? Yeah, I think he only has two unity chains. Oh, huh. no, he only has one. He only has everybody is his only really. Oh, okay, wow, that's a very unreliable uni chain, but it is freaking wide. It's a very wide move. Um, in order to get out of it, you have to jump it, or you have to sidestep it, or do whatever you can to actually get out of the move. Uh, Everwhite, like I said, is something you'll see a lot on incoming, um, or especially when it comes to half zoning and trying to beat Duff Mika out of his game. It forces you to kind of, like, you know, delay your process to Duff um, but eventually uh, you're going to get there because the move has a very slow um, lag time. Okay, moving on to Marionette. Now, Marionette is probably his most unique move. So when you do Marionette, you have two choices. You can either press the circle button, which your um your, your special guard, and you'll do like you know bullets or I think I'll string bullets. I think is what's called. Um, hit the opponent. Very good ender, of course. Or you can press the attack button and bring in a another uh, like his teammate to come and attack. Now, when this happens, temporarily your opponent cannot switch out characters, which doesn't really matter since you well. You know, that happens anyway. But I believe in that case, if you wanted to uni assist or something, you couldn't do it since the character that you will be uni assisting will be another character that you can't bring in. So I guess in a way, technically, he can lock you out. Um, but it depends on the character's guard break. So if I actually wanted to, let me just go ahead and take out this character and then take out this character, bring a knife on here. Okay, and I got to wait a little bit because Marionette won't activate if he has no character. So I have to wait a little bit for this move to actually come through. But, um... Basically what I'm saying is the guard break will be different and so the angle will be different. So a combo with Buggy will not work with Dolphamingo and a combo with Ivan will work differently because he does the rolling variation. So depending on what your opponent actually has, you will have to change your combo game with Marionette and it'll be really awkward. So it's really good they actually gave him this bullet string for an ender um, in case of that. As you can see from all of his special moves between Overheat being pretty weak in 20% damage, uh, Everwipe being pretty weak in terms of uh, specials, uh, and then you have Marionette, which overall is also kind of weak as well. Um, he doesn't have any big damage tricky moves. Um, like, I'm beyond saying other tricky characters do have them, but for 3 point character, he does not have any very damaging uh, special attacks. So it means he has to rely mainly on either playing with his team or also going in with combos for his overheat extensions or overheat repetitions that he can do, or loops, I mean. So, um, that's basically it in special attack. No real um, exciting stuff about it, except the marionette and the Everwhite how it actually works. Overheat is pretty, you know, the move you're going to be using a lot, so I guess you might as well get used to it. Um, but when it comes to, like, mixing up stuff, this character's really dangerous. I mean, this character's kind of scary. He, he, he basically traps you. He makes you... He, he causes you to make mistakes. That's what I feel like this character's trickiness actually comes in. Like, he has so much stuff for his options and everything is that by themselves you're like eh but when they're all together it creates a very like scary force of just stuff just constantly being attacked and bombarded like it's like a nail but like which is other things so like for close range and far range he doesn't really do a lot of good in that close range combat but from a distance and for a mid distance he's just getting hit by stuff over and over and over again and then if you're about to hit him he runs away and speaking of runaway, we're going to move on to his special movement. Duff Mingo's special movement is Skywalk. Actually, nope, that is not true. That is not what it's called. It is not called Skywalk. What is the move called? Sky Path? I think it's called Sky's Path. I think it might be called Sky's Path. We'll go with Sky's Path. But uh, when you do the special movement, you basically am... I'm almost said immortal. But... Once you press the button here, you can help. You can pretty much take between the button, and look how much this is you cover. Look at this. That's insane. Not to mention that this move can also be done in the air as well. So you can kind of like jump and then like recover, make make a mistake. I oh, will not make a mistake. I mean, you can't do that. But you can just get out of the way easily. Oh, I forgot to mention, guys, that if I haven't mentioned already, uh, overheat can be done in the air. 
which is kind of slightly delayed. It does the same amount of damage, but it can be done in the air. Okay, so S Sky's Path is a pretty good anti, like, you know, close combat move. I feel like that's one of the reasons he got it, as to get a very good far-reaching uh, backstep or sidestep or, like, you know, whatever, to get out of close combat characters like uh, Whitebeard or Kuma and try to beat him out of that stuff. And on top of that, it is a Conqueror's Hockey move, so once you do, once press the R1 ability or whatever button you press, you automatically proc the um, Conqueror's Hockey, so you automatically, like, used up some of your bar uh, for your move. And so one of the things you have to really do good in playing off Mingo is conserving that hockey meter because you're going to be doing a lot for Sky's Path. I'm going to be honest, you're probably going to use your meter more on Sky's Path than on um, your actual combos or anything like that. Uh, I, I really hope it's called Sky's Path. I really hope it is. If, it, if it's not, that means I'm mispronouncing it the entire time. Okay, so that's pretty much it in terms of like, you know, Dolphamingo. We talked about Conqueror's Hockey. We discussed the um, the special movement and everything and his utility. So now we're going to move on to his ultimate. And this is where it gets like, I keep saying this is where it gets weird or stupid and stuff. And I'm just like, it's, it's, it's like, it's, he has so many stuff that's just different um, from normal characters. It's just hard to get out of it. So when he goes to his awakening, he doesn't give any benefits or anything like that, but he does get an infinite awakening ultimate. This ultimate is kind of a delay. So once he does the ultimate, strings will actually pop up from the ground. Um, very hard to combo with actually, uh, but when they actually pop up from the ground, you know, the character's caught. And I will admit, does a really cool animation. And in a bit, I'll try to show you a combo with this ultimate, if I can do it properly. So first of all, sir, I'm going to need you all the way in the wall. Wait, this works better. Okay, is that a wall? Okay, we're good. Okay, so let's do this. Um, let's see. Mm. So I'm going to do swipe, swipe, Kawasaki. I messed up, actually. So that's just a wall combo that you can do with the ultimate. You know, if you just want to do something, you just want to use the ultimate, you know, it's just have fun and everything. I messed up. Well, that's where it looks like when it fails, guys. Oh, that's why I messed up. Okay. Okay, I see. You... You're just stupid. Okay, it's, Oh my goodness. Just go. Look how fast the running attack is. It's a very good demonstration of how fast the character is, actually. Didn't do it right. One, two, Conqueror's Hockey. Yeah, now do it. I'm just going to keep on pressing R1 ability too. Hopefully, he messes up. There we go. I'm 100% sure he just recovered into it, but... I won't say 90%, whatever. Okay, so that's it, guys. That's pretty much Doflamingo. I think I explained everything. Normal guard break, heavy guard break. Um, For his what he actually does during his um, uni chain, he just comes in. One, two, three, four. Oh, gosh, that was it. Okay, so it comes with a U-Chain, comes in with a full combo, which you can do. Um, his, uh, I want to say his flash counter is this for the stagger. I want to say that's it. And that's pretty much it. Normal flash card, and uh, that's the character. Now, overall, like I said, the character, in my opinion, is just a character that does a lot of stuff. He does a lot of uh, shit to put your opponent, like, just, just in, some, in your way... Just torture your opponent into making mistakes. Um, Overheat does a really good job at that. Marionette scares them. It also does excellent block. Here we go. You know, knock back and stuff. So that's really well, really good. Um, Overheat, good chip damage. Marionette, shit trick, <laughs> trick damage. And forgot to mention, guys, this is unblockable. Okay, so that's one of the other bright sides Eric White actually has that being an unblockable move. So. One of the things I gotta say you want to do good playing this character is to remember that you need to always press buttons. Um, you don't want to stay still. You don't ever want to be in the same spot the entire time. You want to bombard your opponent and just uh, keep making making them like do things they're not comfortable doing. Because once you're in that position where you have the edge, you carry the game. Okay, you pretty much got it. Uh, they're trying to work up to you, and all you have to do is maintain it, and you got it. 
Okay, that's it, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Remember, for that person, you know, special South Mingo player, in case you uh, you need to, please go in the comment section and just kind of mark in exactly how to do that combo properly. And um, I'll get back to you guys. If you want to see some say something about what else to combo with Mingo, let that in as well. I'm open to any suggestions of what the character can do. Remember, this is a starter guide. This is not an official advanced guide for Doth Mingo. I'm not the have guy. Now, if this is a Kuma guide, this will be an advanced combo guide, but I'm not doing that. Okay. Now, enjoy your day, guys, and enjoy playing One Piece Burning Blood.